Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel where it's been an absolute age since we had an Ever Queen painting video. The reason for this is I had six different streams to edit down. Now they're all edited down, I can start painting her again, which is going to be super fun because it's been about two years since we started this model and she's still nowhere near completed, though we are on Sir Humphrey, her giant beetle. So today, this was actually requested by my Patreon Lloyd, who wanted me to continue doing this series. He He's really been enjoying this painting series and he really likes to watch me paint these minis when I get around to doing it. It doesn't always work, the lighting's always really weird in this room no matter where I have it. So yeah, we're, we're kind of trying to face that at the moment, which is... Uh, we're, we're, uh, all of the random wordage. <laughs> But anyway, I figured this time we're going to talk about the goddess that um, actually inhabits uh, Aluriel's body, Isha. Uh, now the reason for this is she's a really important goddess when it comes to a lot of the elven history and what actually happens when the world falls. I'm not really up to date with the new Warhammer fantasy because they're returning to the Warhammer world before Age of Sigma kicked off, which means this model is no longer considered canon, which sucks because this model's fucking gorgeous. And we have to go back to the original Aloreal model, which is ridiculously hard to find. There's been one, I, I've had two of them in my lifetime, one of them belonged to my dad and was the first mi miniature that I ever painted, badly I might add, with a purple dress. And then there's the green one that I've painted on this channel and I think she's gorgeous, I love her. She was given to me by one of my closest friends that's unfortunately no longer with us. And then this one here, this model that I've been painting for you guys and you've been seeing on stream and on my YouTube videos is again really important because she was given to me by another important figure to me. So unless the third figure comes out, like the newest one, they remake the mini and she's beautiful and stunning, I'm not interested. That sounds really consumerist of me, but here we are. Anyway, that's how I feel about them redoing Alariel. So instead of that, let's get into the actual story of Isha, the god elven goddess of nature, fertility, and the harvest. But she's also the protector of the natural order, as well as divine mother of the elven race. Essentially, any elf, be they um, Othwani, uh, wood elven, or Drakari, they... Sorry, Drakari is House of the Dragon and, and Game of Thrones. And to be honest, I haven't honestly watched an episode of that series. But for some weird reason, Drakari just kind of sat in in my head. So, I mean, Drukari, or, which is the Dark Elves, who are the, the group that I particularly like to, to paint and play as, uh, including Marathi, who I have finally finished. If you're interested in seeing her, let me know. And I may do a short showing her off uh <laughs> we're kind of diving sideways in this story she's worshipped by the wood elves of the old world as one of their principal deities although other elves pray to her for aid in agriculture including sowing and reaping of harvests for protection during childbirth which is incredibly rare in elven society please bear that in mind or for help when abroad in the wilderness Isha is depicted as an elven woman full of life and beauty and is considered to be the divine mother of the whole elven race, as I've said before. Her symbol is the all-seeing eye from which she sheds tears for her mortal children and their sorrows, including death. As for the goddess of nature, Isha taught the elves how to care for the land and gain a plentiful harvest. It is Isha who blesses the Ever Queen with wisdom, beauty, and power, and she who preserves the eternal glades of Avalon from the blemishes of winter. At the dawn of time, Azurian, the king of the elven pantheon and the creator god, decided that while the elves he crafted would be prestigiously long lived, they would still grow weary of the world and eventually die. Isha, who loved her elven children above all her other natural creations, despaired and cried in anguish at their eventual loss, her tears falling like rain onto the mortal world below, providing the waters of life that transformed the island continent of Ulthuan, that the elves first called home, into such a rich and bountiful land. Thereafter, Isha has watched her mortal children keenly, ever alert to ways in which she may aid them. Whilst direct contact between the elven gods and their mortal children has long been forbidden by the Azurian, 
Isha sometimes pleads with her daughter Lilius, the goddess of the moon, dreams and fortune, to send divine tidings and portents through dreams and nightmares, so that the elves might not confront the perils of the world without some measure of divine warning and guidance. Only when the creator's attention is elsewhere does Isha dare intervene personally, spreading her magics across Ulthwan to shrivel the demons and evildoers that threaten her children. A common phrase on Ulthwan used to greet others is blessings of Isha upon you, to which others might respond, may you live a thousand years. The Tilians use a different name for the old world goddess Rhea than the folk of the empire. They call her Ishia, similar to the name of the elven goddess, probably due to their translations of the ancient scrolls left by the high elves in their abandoned colonies in the modern land of Tilia. Isha, like many other elven gods of the Warhammer universe, is also worshipped by the Aldari in Warhammer 40,000 universe. There are several canon conflicts concerning Isha's place within the elven pantheon. Some sources mention Isha and Azurian as being husband and wife, while others, older resources, states that Lilith, Isha's daughter, is actually Azurian's consort. So there's really not an awful lot on this particular goddess, uh, so you know what, I, I'm gonna have to leave it here I'm afraid. I know I hate doing shorter videos, but w what I like to do per video when I'm doing a topic is, if it's getting really long then obviously I'll split the topic up into two, but if it's a fairly short part of the topic then I'm gonna leave it where it is. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do next time for this video, but I guarantee you that it will still be something to do in line with Alariel and the Ever Queen and the history of the Ever Queen. It may just be something to do with some of the battles that she took part in, or even some of her, like, the, about Isha's daughter, Lilith, who has an awful lot of stuff that she does with the mortal races and the mortal realm. Uh, you'd be surprised. She's actually apparently the uh, leader, the goddess of the uh, of the Bretonians, which is something that, you know, it's not something that's actually brought up very often. Anyway, thank you once again to Lloyd for requesting this video. Thank you for watching this slightly shorter video. And I do hope to see you next time. Take care, have fun, and goodbye.